Welcome to this uh, SDS4 uh, distribution software training video. This is just to give you a brief overview of the software and we're going to run through um, a very very quick cradle to grave today just to show you how the uh, the workflow um, is actually put into action. Okay, so uh, here's the, uh, the main dashboard. Um, let me stress at this point that this is um, simply a demo version of, of the full software. Um, it does have all the template criteria, but there's no live data in the system. Okay, so um, we have a bit of live data in the system, just a little bit just to show you. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, create a new inquiry. Um, just before we do that, let me just show you really quick. We've got a search part section so you can search your own inventory, um, a company search for searching for customers and suppliers, um, quote section, sales orders, purchase orders, invoices, shipping and receiving. RMAs, returns, and account center, and obviously our uh, reports of billing. And if your phone system is up to scratch, you can uh, obviously progress your calls through the system as well, so you know when your sales guys are on the phone and when they're not. Okay, you can also change the theme on here, which uh, allows you to change different themes for different sets of mood. Okay, so that's a really quick overview of the dashboard. Okay, so what we're going to run through now is the uh, we're going to add a new requirement to the system. Okay, now I'm going to use um, Express Electronics as a guinea pig. They've given me two parts. Instead of going through and putting two forms, I'm just going to use the multiple entry form. Okay, this makes things much, much quicker. So if I just want to add uh, a couple of parts in here, I can add them a lot quicker than I would be doing them individually. So if somebody's firing part numbers down the phone, you can just get this form and just tab through um, exactly you know what you need to do. So let's just... All right, add these two. So I'm going to say save and close. So those two inquiries are now in the system from the customer. So for example, if somebody calls in and they're not be your particular account and you want to put inquiry in for one of your colleagues, you just enter the inquiry into the system and your colleague will see it when they get back from lunch or wherever they are that day. So I'm going to open my current requirements. Okay. Um, this one here, SHT15. Well, I've got that in my own inventory. So all I do here is find it from my inventory tab, post to found parts, and that's in there and I set that as my preferred availability. So I've already found the parts for that because I've got them in stock. On this particular one, okay, so let's bring up the part number. I'm just gonna do a little cheat and copy and paste this part number so I don't have to type it again. Okay, um, let's bring up a web page where I can find the stock. So I'm gonna go to oemsecrets.com, and here we go. And the customer wanted a thousand pieces, so let's use this comparison tool here and find the best price. Just click compare. All right, so Avna Express have got the best price, and they're at 5.31. Okay, so I'm going to put a quick offer in the system. That brings up the supply details. I can offer images. I can do an aviation um, uh, offer if I want to, but this is just a basic offer, the default one. So Avna Express was a supplier. It's web sales because I buy these online. Uh, put in my exchange rate for the day, 1,000 pieces. And they were at 5.31, 5.31. So that's my offer in the system. And the parts are rush compliant. So I'll save and close. As you see down here, I put an offer in before. I've got two there. So I just post that to found parts. And I set that as my preferred availability. So all I need to do now is I just decide which one I want to quote. Let's just say I'm going to quote one of them for now. And I'm going to quote this one here. I'm going to create the quote. And now I've got my quote screen. Okay, so I'm going to quote the customer nine bucks. It, my default currency is set to pounds, but I can change that any time. I can quote my customer in euros, yen, but I'm going to quote these. Uh, I'm going to quote this customer in dollars. Okay. There we go. As you can see, uh, one second. There we go. Okay, so I've got my estimated profit of forty-one percent. It's given me my profit margin um, there, and it's also given me the estimated profit in pounds. Um, we are a pounds-based uh, system. Um, if you're a dollar-based system, you can set up as a dollar-based system or a euro-based system. Um, SDS4 is completely global, so if you want to have your base currency as euros, dollars, or pounds, or any other currency for that matter, you can set that in the system, and it'll always give you your profit, your end profit, in your own currency. Okay, so if you're in France, you want it in euros. If you're in America, you want it in dollars. If you're in the UK, you want it in pounds. You can always get this in your own base currency. All right, so I'm going to save this quote. Set the customer terms. Let's give these guys net 30. Okay, I'm just going to preview the quote. Okay, let's go with a landscape quote. 
All right, so my company's Big Time Components. Uh, we're based here. Uh, I'm selling to, I'm selling to and shipping to Express Electronics, and this is all the details of the quote. I can say if the parts are lead free, what the delivery will be, um, and the total, and I can add, add additional charges. I haven't put them in for now. It's just a demo just to show you how it works. And all I do is I can send the quote as HTML, or I can send it as an attachment as a PDF, depending on how the customer prefers it. Okay, so the customer sends me an order for these. So all I do is I go back into the quote, look at the quote number, or look in the system under the customer. There's various different ways to do it. And all I do then is press create sales order. Now what that will do is that will drag everything in from the quote and create the same, te same template, but in a sales order. So I don't have to go back and type everything again. I literally have created my order straight from the quote. Okay, so all I need to do now is type in my customer's uh, PO number. We'll call it one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I jump into the line and I select when I want the parts to ship. So I add a ship date. Thousand pieces. And the ship date is going to be tomorrow. And I'm going to ship via. Let's put the ship date today. Let's say we'll get them in the same day. And I'll dock with the customer on the 13th. So I save that in there. Save this in the system. Okay, I'm going to ship these on the customer's account. They want it shipping uh, UPS Blue. So they've got a UPS Blue account number. There we go. Now at this stage, when the sales order is complete, um, normally the sales manager will check um, the purchase order from the customer and um, approve the sale to go ahead. And at this point, it would be you would click request authorization it would pop up on the screen of the sales manager I'm set to admin so I'm going to authorize my own sales order okay but at this stage let me stress that there is various levels of authorization you can set as the owner of the software you can set no authorization or you can set different levels of authorization if you want to control how the money's been spent in your company and who you're selling components to okay so I'll just save that as you can see here the sales order has been authorized and the parts are in back order. That means the parts have not been ordered yet, but they have been authorized to be purchased. So all I need to do now is create a purchase order so I can buy the parts in for this order. Best way to do this is use the quick jump menu at the top, click on back orders. You can see my orders there at the top, ready to be processed. So what I do now is select the one I want and the bottom press create new PO. Now what this does is this creates me a purchase order so I can buy the parts and I can request authorization from the purchasing manager for these parts to be purchased. Okay, PO status, let's open that up. Okay, let's save this purchase order. And as you can see over here, it's tagged my purchase order number to my sales order number that I just created. Okay, um, I'm gonna ship these by DHL. Yes, I'm gonna bring them in straight away. Ship on our account number, save that again. I would then press request authorization and the purchasing manager would then take my uh, my PO, check that I'm buying the right part, check that I'm buying the right um, from the right company, if it's an authorized supplier or not, and then they would authorize the PO. Like I said, as an administrator, I'm just going to authorize the PO myself. And it tells you who approved the order as well. So if you want to know who approved a certain purchase, you always have traceability in the system to see who approved that particular purchase. Okay, so we're going to save that. Okay, and then all we do there is click email, purchase order, preview it, make sure everything's right, and then all I do then is attach the purchase order by email, and then I can email it straight off to the supplier uh, without really doing anything. Um, okay, so I'll save that in the system, click up back on the sales order, and if we save that now, you'll see the parts have moved from back ordered to inbound. That obviously means that the parts are in transit to us. And then when they be when they are received, uh, the parts will be ready to ship. What I'm going to do um, very very briefly is I'm going to take that PO number there, and I'm going to receive this item into stock. This is what the shipping department would do. It's not something the sales guys would actually ever be involved in, but I'm just going to show you very quickly of how the uh, how the process works. So let me find the PO. So I, there we go. The parts have been shipped from Avnet. The parts have come in. If I want to go for a full inspection report, I can do that. I, it gives me uh, different prompts. I'll just show you real quick. Different prompts of uh, of what I need to check. 
and there's various different pages and it gives you prompts of what to check on different part numbers how were the parts packaged how did they come in was the box in good condition how were the legs these kind of different questions okay and there's also the idea inspection report as well which also gives you um, another overview in a slightly different manner of questions okay um, once those test reports are done and they are uh, they are checked then you can receive the item okay you can upload an image of the uh, of the parts as when they came in as well but I'm just gonna receive them for now and then we can go back to our sales order okay and this will now show on the sales order that the parts have been received and the parts are ready to ship. Apologies for that, I had to jump through a couple of screens because I got lost for a second then. Um, the parts are now ready to ship. So these parts are now ready to be invoiced. The parts are in, they've been checked, they have been, uh, they've been authorized to be bought, the parts have been booked in. All we need to do now is create a new invoice, okay? So we can do this through the shipping center or we can do it straight from the sales order. I'm just gonna do it from here for a shortcut for now. I'm gonna create a new invoice, okay? At this point, when we create a new invoice, there is another level of authorization. Now, again, this is optional. Um, as you can see here, it just said then, but it's jumped because it's seen I'm an admin user. You can authorize the invoice. That means if your customer's on credit hold, for example, or you don't want the parts to ship out to them, um, as the authorizer, you don't have to authorize the invoice and those parts won't go anywhere. The system can't do anything with those parts until it's been authorized. And that's done in the account center. So I'll just click on this real quick and just show you, as you can see here, Express Electronics, and this needs to be authorized by the by either the financial director or the managing director or even the sales manager. I'm going to authorize that invoice authorized, okay? Um, and that's just popped up there to let me know that that part has been authorized. And I'm going to authorize that, and it's been approved by admin. Okay, at this stage, um, this can now be um, invoiced out to the customer. Okay, the parts can be shipped, labels can be printed. Um, and it's it, we can print carton labels and barcode labels and all the rest of it um, and at this stage if I ever want to send a copy of the invoice to my uh, customer I just jump back into the invoice um, find it preview it and then press email um, email document and I can just email that as a PDF um, the other good thing is as well as I can press shipping confirmation this just sends um, puts together a quick email um, to let my uh, customer know that the parts have shipped with a tracking number. Um, it's just a very quick way to let your customer know that parts have been sent out um, on here. So now this has been invoiced, let's just jump back into the sales order one more time. And as you can see, this has now gone red, the items moved to ship and the order's closed. So as the salesperson, I know that these parts have been shipped that day and they're now on my invoicing list and they're no longer in my open orders. And that is how you create a requirement, you add an offer, you create a sales order, a quote and a sales order, excuse me, um, receive the parts, order the parts, and you also invoice the customer. And that's the way that SDS is done. And I've done this all from my seat on SDS. Um, I hadn't had to move anywhere to do this. And there's different levels of authorization in there as well. So I just save that and I go back. And I can go back to my main dashboard. Thank you for uh, for watching this SDS4 training video.